Yo recuerdo muy bien los años Clinton. Era yo un joven viviendo en México. Había mucha riqueza, pero mucho conflicto también. Veía yo a muchos mercenarios batallando. Hey everybody, it's Bats in the Barbell here. It's Haley here. And I want to have a little story time with you guys. And remember guys, this is just story time. It's just stories. And remember guys, this is story time. It's just stories. And because it's just stories, this is not anything that anyone can use in court. I'm not going to say anything in this video that could really get me into a whole lot of trouble. So, I'm going to be careful with what I say. You know what, guys? It doesn't matter if you believe me. It actually doesn't matter. There's already been certain hints and jokes. Do you think they kill in people's fucking fodder? There's already been certain hints and jokes about it here and there. I'm a little bit fucked up. I'm a little bit crazy. Hints and jokes about it here and there that I caught. Then I realized I should probably just admit to it because, yeah, a lot of people wouldn't believe it. And that was okay, because when this does, if this does come out, at least I can claim I didn't hide it. Hide it and it softened the blood. And instead, what's ended up happening is, of course, all these people have said, Hey, you're a liar. He's been proved as a fake for his mercenary past, right? He never trained at the farm at Langley. Okay. What is that? Oh, CIA. CIA. Yeah. No. He, he never worked for the CIA, but when you get to that My top files level, are filled, okay? My files are filled. Field. All these people have just said, hey, you're a liar. Lots of people have so, said- So, other than that, apparently he was abducted by reptilians when he was a child. Large numbers of people have said you're a liar. Just realized- And apparently they did that because they, they, uh, scanned his DNA somehow and figured out that he was a superior human specimen because they want to breed <laughs> who can take beer and look like reptilian. a natty. You're genetic. So maybe even then, since that word is too extreme for them, I grew up a hunter. I was a hunter of exotic game. If that will make you guys feel better. Alright, so let's go back and look at timelines a little bit. A lot of you guys grew up in a completely different world, politically, and even from a war perspective. You guys, a lot of you guys reached adulthood around the time of 9-11, or shortly thereafter, or in that reign. I'm turning 40 years old this year. I'm turning 40 years old this year. I was 18 at the end of 1994. I turned 18 in 1994. President Clinton became president in 93. So my young adulthood was during the Clinton years, during the Clinton administration. So President Clinton was the president from the time I was 17 all the way until I was 25. The president before him was George Bush Sr. Senior, who was the former head of the CIA. The Clinton administration was one of the most corrupt administrations there ever was. People who don't know that just need to take a look back at all the things that have been going on with the Clintons over the years. Look at how many hundreds and hundreds of people who had associations with them from the various administrations. 
business partners, things like that, either died in accidents or committed suicide. Because of the tragic death of DNC staffer Seth Conrad Rich, many questions <laughs> remain unanswered. That list is getting really, really long. So yes, I became a man at the start of the Clinton presidency. I was scouted out for certain types of work before I even, before I even finished high school. And people keep saying things, like, and particularly, again, my ex- And particularly, my ex-wife said- Settle this. Who again? I don't know why anyone would think that my ex-wife has any sort of expertise on either the military or mercenaries. On the military or mercenaries. Look what was going on in this country during the Clinton years. We were in the middle of the drug wars, or as some people like to call them, the powder wars. There was massive fighting all through Mexico, Central America, dealing with drug cartels. Everyone from the DEA trying to crack down on them. That people living in this era don't understand because they didn't see what was going on. Once upon a time, there was a time called the Clinton years. Yo recuerdo muy bien los años Clinton. Era yo un joven viviendo en México. Había mucha riqueza, pero mucho conflicto también. Veía yo a muchos mercenarios batallando. Then there was a town called the Powder Wars. Recuerdo también un turista gringo gordito. Era un señor muy extraño. Decía ser un mercenario y un experto en entrenamiento físico. Sin embargo, amenazaba con una ley tejana a los niños que le bajaban los pantalones. Estaba el señor obsesionado con los Clinton y sus teorías extrañas. Él tenía una novia a la cual le gustaba a él ver besar a los locales. There was an enormous amount of mercenaries being hired to do various work. So yes, anyone with the right type of backgrounds who could be trained, who had aptitudes, were recruited to do this sort of work, even with no military experience. And men weren't even always paid cash because the truth was, this was a very competitive market. A competitive environment was very dangerous, and there were other things worth more than money for people who wanted to stay in this line of work. Training and hardware. Those things were worth their weight in gold. There were times because of the lack of getting enough training or any access to newer tactics, newer skills that were being learned and pushed out there. They would sometimes do jobs in exchange for hardware to improve their operational capacity, to improve their ability to make money, and when it comes to military-grade hardware and access to training facilities, nobody has deeper pockets than Uncle Sam. And during the Clinton years, they had very deep pockets when it came to that sort of thing. And the beautiful part, we had no access to resources and things when things went wrong because everything was done clandestinely. A Tibra factor. But I'm one of the lucky ones and I survived. So, those of you who don't believe any of this, that's okay. I really don't give a fuck. I'm still telling my story. This is what it is. And if you don't believe me, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. But I will tell you this, if you decide that you're going to come confront me physically about this, you better not be a fucking pog. <laughs> uh, oh my god. You better not be a fucking pog. <laughs> but I'm one of the lucky ones and I survived. <laughs> But I'm one of the lucky ones and I survived. <laughs> so, those of you who don't believe any of this, that's okay. I really don't give a fuck. 
I'm still telling my story. This is what it is. And if you don't believe me, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. <laughs> but I will tell you this. If you decide that you're going to come confront me physically about this, you better not be a fucking pog. <laughs> better not be a fucking pog. Pog. <laughs> Pog. <laughs> fucking pog. Pog. You better not be a fucking pog. But I'm one of the lucky ones and I survived. <laughs> it's like this this morning, too. <laughs> Physically about this, you better not be a fucking pog. You better be a stone cold killer. If you come at me aggressively, voice, face, negative body language is so on you, I know it's a train killer. Because I don't flinch anymore when I hear that rifle round cut by my head. When I hear that whoop. Boop. Whoop. When I hear a rifle round come by my head, when I hear that whoop, when I hear that rifle round go by my ear and it go boop, I love Harita V. I love Harita V. Boop. Whoop. Shitty on his face. Cause I don't flinch anymore when I hear a rifle round come by my head. When I hear that whoop or that snap or that sonic boom. I haven't flinched in 20 years from that shit. <laughs> I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger, those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the law when I lay my vengeance upon thee. I haven't flinched in 20 years from that shit. I got over that a long time ago. So if you come at me, I want you to know, son, it's not gonna be me that goes in the ground. So if you come at me, I want you to know, son, it's not gonna be me who goes in the ground. I'm still here. I'm still upright and drawing air. Alright guys, well that's my story. There's my explanation. I'm done. 
All right, guys, so there's my story. There's my explanation. I'm done. What was up, everybody? This is Cobra 22 Codename from the 3rd, 2nd, 150,000th Battalion Delta Ultra Mega Force. And I was browsing YouTube when I saw this Order 66 video on Jason Blaha. And I immediately said, that's I bore him away. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't seen this guy in about 13 years, so I remember him. I remember him like it was yesterday. We used to be in school together. He always talked about being paid fiction writer, but he seemed pretty serious about his claims about being a reptilian. And I thought he meant like reptilian, like he worked at a pet store. I thought that's what he was talking about at first, but it turns out that he actually thought he was the pet. But this is a whole big fucked up thing. He also thought seriously about being a mercenary and being a model. Now, I think he used to build models. Model airplanes, model with Sears Tower. I don't know. Yeah, I think he used to build models. I think there's a little confusion with that whole thing going on there. And all he used to talk about all sorts of crazy stuff. So me and the boys, we started calling him Hemingway because of all the unbelievable bullshit stories he came up with all the fucking time. So that's where the Hemingway really came from. So I'm not confused at all about the Lifetime Order 66 he got from Jason. <laughs> Over. Mr. Lord Vader himself is pretty sick. Okay, peace out. Bye. Yeah! Hey everybody, it's here, and um, I just wanted to say that this video is not funny at all. My female girlfriend and I are filing FBI claims on all of the guests in this video. <laughs> what you guys don't understand is that you all just committed espionage. Jerry Ward, I hope you have some lawyers, because the FBI will be knocking on your door, son. Order 66 Blaha's candy ass. <laughs>
No, I'm just, I'm just being Jason Blaha real quick. Murdered? No. It's traveling through the vent and it sounds like a woman screaming. Oh! Well, that's how Jason Blaha talks. Yeah. That's not funny. And I will talk to you guys next time.